In this video, we're going to talk about Kotlin coroutine suspendable function, the most important thing to know. So without wasting any time, let's get started. We will discuss about the internals of suspendable function and also we'll see how it actually execute our tasks. Let's get started. So first, I'm going to show you very simple example using thread. And after that, we eventually come to our suspendable function or suspend modifier. So for that, let me create a file and the file name is thread file it's a normal file and uh, i'm gonna use a data class naming user so for that let me just create user data class for you and in this we have a user id type is string and we have the username so it's a very simple data class now come back to our thread file and in this i'm gonna create a function a get user info I'm gonna pass my user ID and return type of this function is user. So I just want to mimic a network request call because we are using here threads. I'm gonna sleep my thread, not this. I'm gonna sleep my thread for let's say three seconds. And after that, I'm gonna return my user. So simply pass your user ID and the name. So name is my name. So it's a very simple function that mimics a network request call, which takes three seconds to complete its execution. Now I'm using here main function and in this main, I'm using print ln get user info, pass the user ID, which is let's say one. Now I'm going to show you the decompile code for this function. So for that, go to the tools, Kotlin, so Kotlin bytecode and simply click on this decompile. So when you see the decompile code, you will see this is our function get user info and we are passing user ID. So it check for the non null parameter and after that it will sleep our thread for three seconds and eventually it will return me my user. But there are few problem with it because this will sleep our thread for three seconds let's say i'm executing this function on my main thread so my main thread sleeps for three seconds and the core purpose the core thing that our main thread will do is to update our user interface and if our main thread get blocked for three seconds eventually it will give me a crash application not responding so to encounter this issue let me just first execute this thing for you as you can see it will take three seconds to complete and after that we'll receive the user information now how we can actually modify this function so that our main thread does not block. So to do that, I'm going to create one more function, get user info. And this time I'm using here callback. So previously we are actually returning a user, but this time we can do the same thing using callbacks. So for that, first we have to pass the user ID. Next we have to pass a Lambda. So I'm going to call this Lambda on complete and in this will return user. Now we can create a new thread and in this new thread, I'm going to sleep for three seconds. Now this time it will never block your main thread because uh, we are creating a new thread. So that's a different thread. So after sleep of three seconds, I'm using here on complete and simply return my user or you can say just pass this user in my on complete function. So that's it. This is our execution. Now instead of using here get user info i'm gonna use my get user info callback pass my user id which is one and in this uh, trailing lambda we are getting the user so simply use your print ln and print your user just me comment this thing so now when you execute it your main thread wouldn't block because of uh, this new thread creation so after three seconds you will receive the information regarding to your user but there are few problems in it and the problem is let's say during your network communication you will receive uh, some error so it will throw an error let's say io exception so you have to catch this exception and you want to show this uh, information to our user in the user interface so if you want to do that thing you have to change few things in your on complete lambda but before that let me just show you the decompile code so for that, again, go to your tools, Kotlin, so Kotlin bytecode, decompile it. And you will see this is our 
execution of function get user info callback this, this is our decompile code now in this uh, we are passing the function one because we are only passing one parameter in our lambda that is why it will create an object of type function one on complete it will check few non-null parameter things and after that it it will create a new thread and in this new thread we have a new function get user info callback when you control click on it this is the actual location where all of our logic is present so our thread will sleep for three seconds then after the completion of this uh, line it will use on complete and uh, invoke it pass my user information which will receive in our main function now we want we want to handle the error case too if networks throw any kind of io exception we want to catch it or any kind of exception we want to catch it so for that you can simply make this user nullable and also we'll have to pass a throwable now i'm using here try catch catch the exception and if we got any exception i'm using here on complete in place of user we'll receive null and in place of throwable we receive the exception so simply pass that exception in this try i'm using on complete pass my user and in place of throwable i'm using here null so now this time on complete callback is able to handle the error case and success case both so go back to your get user info callback and first parameter is a user and second parameter is your exception so when user is not null that means we are receiving the user information from the backend and if our exception is not null that means we are encountering some error just cut your user paste in here and if you receive any kind of exception you can simply print the localized message now just run it and you will get the information right so long story short this on complete is the core part of our get info callback because using on complete will retrieve the user information and also will receive the exceptions right so this is how you can actually do the things with threads let me just show you the decompile code so that for you it's very easy to understand decompile it scroll down and this time as you can see because our lambda contains two parameter it will eventually create an object of function type 2 this is the creation of our new thread and this is the location where all of our logic will be present so thread slip for three seconds now this time it will use try catch so on complete invoke pass the user information and if you encounter any kind of uh, exception we'll use on complete and invoke this function pass the exception so it's a very simple flow now i'm gonna do the same thing using suspend modifier so for that let me just open the project mode and here i'm gonna create one more file and the file name is suspend file create a file in this i'm gonna create a function uh, get user info pass the user id type of this thing is string make sure to use your suspend modifier because it's a suspendable function and i'm gonna use this name get user info too because we have already created get user info that's why it will collide with get user info that we have previously created now in this i'm using delay because if you are using suspend we can use delay instead of thread dot sleep and i'm gonna sleep this thing for three seconds and after that i'm gonna return my user so user pass the user id and the name and return it just change the type from nothing to user we have main function and in this main function i'm gonna use get user info to but before that let me just show you the decompile code this is very interesting part so for that go to tools kotlin so kotlin byte code decompile it and there we go it's a very small function but look at the decompile code it's way bigger than the previous one that we were having with threads long story short i'm gonna just tell you what is happening under the hood so this is our public static final get user info to function and as you can see because we are using a suspend modifier in front of your our function it passes a non-null continuation naming object naming completion 
now this continuous emotion is a very interesting thing because every function that you are having in your project internally uses this continuation now this continuation contains the information about your programming call stack i mean from where you will call this get user info to function because once we complete it with the execution of our get user info to function we have to return back to our program call stack and notify him that my execution is done you can continue with the other functions this continuation contain all of the information that you want after the execution of our get user info to continue with your program call stack it contains the information about your parameter it contains the information about your variable that you have in your function so basically it contains everything now with our get user info to let me just show you the function so this is our function now delay is another suspend function so let me just show you the delay function and this is my delay function as you can see it is also a suspend function so for every suspend function we have a new continuation and that new continuation contains all of the information regarding the originating call within our programming call stack now let's take a very simple example of this function so imagine a call stack in that call stack first it will insert get user info to call after that it will insert delay now delay will have a different continuation and your get user info have main continuation so your delay continuation contains the information about the previous main continuation and also it contains the information of your originating call now i'm going to call this get user info to function within our main so for that i'm using run blocking and get user info to pass my user id which is 4 in this case now let's understand this thing with programming call stack so in our programming call stack first will insert our main function and this main function will have a continuation naming main continuation i'm just giving the name so that for you it's very easy to understand so we have main continuation and that main continuation is a part of our main function because get user info 2 is a suspendable function and every suspendable function will have a new continuation due to that reason in our programming call stack we will simply insert get user info and this contains a new continuation naming user continuation and this user continuation contains the information about the originating call within our programming call stack it also contains the information about the line number and it also contains the information about the previous continuation which is main continuation okay next line is delay now delay is another suspendable function that means it also creates a new continuation and i'm going to call that continuation as delay continuation delay continuation contains the information about the previous continuation and also it contains the information about the line number or line of our program and it also contains the information about the parameters like in this case we have 3 seconds next line is return user user id himanshu so this is not a suspendable function that means it won't insert in our programming call stack so now in our programming call stack we have four things so we have main function we have get user info to we have delay now these three will have different continuation so once we are done with delay will eventually pop this thing from our call stack and will return back to our get user info and when get user info is completed then will return the user and eventually it will popped up that get user info to function call from our stack and lastly we have main function and when we are done with the main function it will eventually pop that thing from our stack so our stack is empty that means our program execution is done and this is how suspendable function will work every suspendable function will create a new continuation and this new continuation contains a lot of information that you want after the execution of your suspendable function now if i introduce few more delay let's say i introduce here 5 second i introduce delay of uh, let's say 7 second so every function is a suspendable function that means every function will create a new continuation well continuation is not a new concept it's a very old concept every program every functions that you have in your project or in your android application 
will have continuation internally as i said to you it contains all of the information regarding your programming call stack that is why it, it was used previously now with suspend modifier because uh, we want to suspend their execution and when we are done with her execution we have to return back in our programming call stack and this information will only present in our continuation and that is why we will create a new continuation every time when we will use suspendable function. I hope you got the point and I hope you got the internals how it works. Well we will meet in our next part where we will discuss new things about cord and coroutine. Till that goodbye.